All right, well, Malcolm, Cheez-It Bowl it is. Going back to Orlando, not your first trip down there. What do you make of it all? Uh, it's a fun time down there in Orlando. Some nicer weather, you know. Lots, uh, lots of scenery to look at, so it'll be fun. All right, members of the media, if you have a question for linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez, please click raise hand and we'll try and get to everybody. Our first question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, Malcolm, one of the uh, one of the biggest challenges of uh, of this week, obviously, or of this game, obviously, is Derek King, a uh, a mobile quarterback. What uh, what specifically does that mean to you when you've got a a really mobile guy back there that can that can run and throw? You know, we got to be uh, on our assignments, know what gaps we fit on the run, and they like to use them to run a lot. So we got to fit our gaps and uh, plug our holes. You, uh, you're a guy that'll they'll come in uh, on the pass rush as well. Uh, is does he uh, does he like to break down and, and take off out of uh, some scrambling situations too? Yeah, he's a big scrambler and he makes uh, he makes uh, big plays on scrambling and throwing it down the field. So we gotta gotta contain him. All right, change the track a bit. What are the uh, what are the Harper brothers like, Devin and Thomas? We've gotten to know them a little bit this year, but what are those two guys like? Uh, they're fun to be around. And they're chill, and uh, it's it's all love over here with the the twins or the brothers. So, like I said, I mean, everyone loves them, and they uh, bring positive energy around here. Are they are they kind of like twins? Yeah, like sometimes. Yeah, they're like when they uh, kind of like when they trot off the field and kind of jog, they have similarities. So we always uh, give them some heck about that. All right, good stuff. Thanks, man. Our next question comes from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Malcolm, you know, five months ago, we didn't even know if we were going to have a football season. Uh, what are your thoughts on just the fact that we were able to get to this point and, and you guys are getting ready to play in a bowl game? Uh, it's very disciplined of us and the team to, uh, you know, stay away from the COVID. And we did a very good job of uh, getting to play every week. And some teams were unfortunate enough not able to play. So they're just a privilege to uh, be able to play every week. And how uh... – Excited you to you know, get back to Miami, like Evan said. It's going to be a fun game. I mean, they're pretty athletic, so uh, we can't wait to go down there in Orlando and uh, see what it's about. I appreciate you. Hey, Malcolm, just to kind of piggyback off of Frank question, Frank's question about COVID. You know, we've heard Coach Gundy say a lot of times that he felt like the trainers and the medical staff had the best plan in the country. But what does that look like from a player's standpoint? Like, what are, you know, what did you do from your perspective to be able to, you know, keep things going during the course of the season? I mean, this is, I mean, truly everybody had to play a part. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like after games, you know, a lot of guys want to go out, but you know, with our team, we just stayed in, you know, just uh, got recovered up and just came the next day for COVID testing. So it's definitely just staying in, staying at the house and just, you know, kicking it with the guys that you've uh, been around for so long. All right, our next question is going to come from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Hey, Jason. Hey, Malcolm. Uh, obviously, you guys come from a, a conference that's well known for its offense, going up against a, a, an offense that's been pretty successful of its own, Miami. Do you feel like this is just kind of one last opportunity for you guys to, to prove yourselves that this wasn't, you know, just you guys had success against the, the Big 12 offenses because you guys are familiar with them, but actually able to, to showcase that you guys, de this defense has been for real all year? Yeah, it's always, we always go out there and try to shut everybody down. So, I mean, it's always going to be a test going out there against the ACC team. And so it'll be fun to see uh, how we uh, match up against them. I know when you look at the stats uh, and, and they only have, I think their their top two running backs only have 200 yards each. Is that deceptive when you, have you looked at much of them? And it, obviously a lot of their running comes from, from King, but uh, to, to think that, uh, you know, you're going up against a run game that's really basically just the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, we still got to uh, come into effect with the running backs. I mean, we still got to do our part and uh, be able to tackle them because, like I said, they're all athletic out over there. So it'll be fun. Thanks, Malcolm. Malcolm, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate you. No problem. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a great night. Thanks, Malcolm. All right. All right, it's another year, another bowl for you. Yes, sir. You know, that's all you know now at this point.
<laughs> yes, sir. But this year wasn't like every other year. You had to go through uh, a heck of a lot. I mean, this was this is kind of one of those years that you'll never forget, right? I mean, yes, just from a standpoint, not even a football standpoint, right? Yes, sir. Um, kind of take us like you know, take us on the journey here a little bit of kind of what what this season means to you. Um, what makes it special? Uh, you know, 2020 has been crazy, like from the start to end, and it's just something you have to deal with, even though it's been a lot of ups and downs. It's just like any other year, you cherish every moment because you never know like when it'll be the last moment. So I just take it day by day and enjoy every moment. That's wise words right there. Uh, members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State defensive back Jark Bernard, please click raise hand. Our first question is going to come from Scott Wright from Oklahoma. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, Jark, how does your role change when uh, when Rodarius is not uh, is not out there as, like he's going to be this week for this uh, this game? I don't. I feel like it doesn't change much. You know, I've been playing a lot this year uh, alongside him, so I just feel like the workload will increase a little bit more, but I don't feel like it'll change much. I mean, obviously, uh, you'd rather, you know, or well, I don't know if you it matters, but uh, but um, my question is, do you uh, do you enjoy that uh, that added challenge that comes with uh, with him not being out there? Oh yes, sir. You know, you go out there playing the best each and week. So I mean, of course, you look forward to it. It's just another opportunity to showcase my talents. With uh, with Thomas Harper, how has uh, how have you seen him develop this year? I know he's uh, he's kind of playing in your old spot quite a bit there. Uh, how have you seen him develop this season? Uh, he's developed a lot tremendously on and off the field. Uh, I feel like he's gained a lot more experience this year because he's been getting more reps and I feel like he's just developed better as a player and he knows more about the game now. Was he a guy that you could see last year was uh, was going to be able to to come in and, and make an impact? Oh, yes. He has tremendous ability, and he's smart, and he can cover really well and tackle. So I just – I knew, like, when he first came in, he was going to be a guy. He's really special. Thanks, Jark. Our next question will come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Jark. I know you guys fell short of a, you know, a conference title, but – how important would it be to be able to end, end the year on a, on a positive note with a bowl game win? Uh, it's very important. I mean, you get to enjoy each other for the last game. I mean, you work so hard all year, and a bowl game is like a prize or a present, as you say, at the end of the year. So, of course, you want to win, like go out on a good note because you're going against a good team, and it's a special matchup. Well, actually, the same thing I asked Malcolm, uh, you know, five months ago, um, you know, we didn't even know if there would be a college football season. What are your thoughts on the fact that you guys were able to get to this point and, and have a, a postseason? Oh, we're just grateful because you see each week, it seems like a game is getting canceled or is just getting postponed. So we're just really grateful to be in this position, even though all the ups and downs COVID has caused. So we're just grateful to be in the position we are in. Well, I appreciate you. Our next question comes from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Jari, kind of piggybacking off of what Frank asked. You know, normally before a bowl game, you guys have a whole bunch of activities you got to go through, and it's not a, not the same as a normal week of, you know, preparation. You know, but this week, this year with COVID and all that, it's probably not going to be the same. What's the feeling like going into this, you know, knowing that this is – there's not going to be all those, like, uh, extra stuff, all that extra stuff going on? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we know it's going to be different. We just know, like – I feel like it'll be less of a distraction because when you go down there, you got things you do outside of like practice and stuff. But this year is just strictly focused on the game. So I feel like that'll give us an opportunity to just focus on the game and go out there and try to win. Thanks, Jark. Hey, Jark, I've got one final question for you. You're really set up to be, you know, a prominent player in the secondary next year, in the defense next year. What does this bowl game mean for you personally as you continue to take steps up the ladder, you know, in terms of your visibility within the team and the Big 12 and beyond? Yes, sir. Like you said, it's just another game for me to develop and get better. And I look at it as a, a good opportunity to go out against a good Miami team 
because they had good receivers, good offense, good quarterback, and a good scheme. So I just feel like it'll be a really good opportunity for me to develop and get ready for next year. All right, well, that'll do it for questions. But before we cut, cut you loose, is there anything maybe that you wanted to talk about or anything that you feel is important that we missed? Uh, no, I think we covered everything. All right, well, we're thankful for you. We appreciate you. Thank you, guys. All right, have a great night. You too. Thanks. Not too shortly, though. I just got a text that he's still out there on the jugs gun getting some extra work in. So you just be patient. He'll be coming. All right. Well, the 2017 season started with a home win over Tulsa, ended with a bowl game in Orlando, and a young Dylan Stoner caught a touchdown in that game. <laughs> so that what do you remember most from that last trip, that, that bowl game, the Camping World Bowl? Oh, man. Uh, we got more of an experience last time we headed down to Orlando. We got to go to Disney World and stuff like that. So definitely going to miss the whole bowl experience, but excited to play uh, Miami for one last game as a Cowboy. All right. Members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State receiver Dylan Stoner, please click raise hand. Our first question is going to come from Luke Slayball from Fox 23 in Tulsa. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, Dylan, the early indication is Tylen wants to come back and play in this game. Why is it important for him to finish out the year and play with you guys? I just think that's a testament of his character. You know, he's a cowboy through and through. And um, not to speak down on anyone who's opted out for the rest of the year, but, you know, he wants to go out on a high note. And, um, you know, being a little nicked up, I think he wants to just, you know, go out, play a good team, and uh, have a good last experience as a cowboy. How much do you think the team will miss that loyalty and that resolve that he had? A lot. I mean, how could you not? I mean, the guy's been productive since he stepped foot on that field. And, um, you know, he's the humblest guy that I know with that much talent. It's just unbelievable. He's a great, great guy, great player. And, you know, I tip my cap to him and um, I'm sure going to miss playing next to him as well. Our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Dylan, going back to 2017, um, you know, you caught a bunch of passes from Mason Rudolph, and then Corn Dog, and now Sanders. So you've you've uh, worked uh, Drew Brown even a few games. You've worked with a lot of quarterbacks. What are the specific differences with with Spencer? What are his strengths, and how is he different than some of the other quarterbacks that you've you've played with? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, he's, he's super mobile, maybe the most mobile and athletic quarterback that I've played with, you know, his ability to extend plays. And, um, you know, once he gets outside the pocket, he's, he's a real threat to not only scramble, but keep plays alive as well. Is, is uh, this offense, have, in your mind, has it changed some because he's such a different kind of quarterback than, say, Mason was? or or even Cornelius? Um, I mean, not drastically. I definitely think there has been some changes and adjustments to his game and style of play. But, um, you know, all in all, I think we've kept pretty similar offense. And, you know, Spencer's talent and ability has been uh, something that's complemented our offense well. Thanks. Our next question comes from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Dylan, you, you kind of said it after the, the Baylor game and then just now that uh, this is your last game. You, you have an opportunity because of NCAA rules to, to come back next year if you wanted. What, what was the decision beside, be, behind saying, you know, you, you want to, to, to make the, the next move after this year? Yeah, you know, I've had, a, I've had a great five years here, you know, redshirting my freshman year and be, being able to play a full four seasons was definitely um, a blessing. And um, you know, it's just time, you know, I'm about to turn 23 next year and, um, you know, I want to give the next level a shot. So I feel like I have a good opportunity to do so. And um, like I said, I've had a fantastic career here. Wouldn't change it for the world, but it's just time to move on to the next thing. Was there ever any thought of if Tylen leaves, you, you've showcased that, that you can be that big guy in, in that, that role if, if he's not there. 
that maybe you could elevate your stock if you were to come back next year and, and take over that role that he's had success with? Yeah, you know, I mean, I haven't thought about that too much. You know, I feel like I've, I'm comfortable with what I have on film and, um, you know, the things that I've been able to show. So, um, you know, just going to give this last game my all and um, hopefully go out on a high note. And then, like I said, um, move on to the next thing. With, with that in mind, then, what do you hope you've instilled to the younger guys behind you, the wide receiver group that'll be filling in for guys like you and, and Tylan and whichever other seniors decide to, to, uh, to call it uh, a career as well. Yeah. You know, we're, we're in a really good shape with the young guys that we, we have right now. We've had a lot of guys have really grown um, and matured a lot over this season and got a lot of reps. Maybe you haven't seen as much on Saturday, but I mean, um, guys are going to step up, fill in, you know, seeing more of, Young guys like Rashad, uh, Brennan Presley, um, the list goes on and on. So, um, you know, I know they're going to continue to work hard and um, keep great names in uh, the Oklahoma State wide receiving core. How tough do you think it'll be to take off that uh, that uniform one last time after the bowl game? Oh, man, it's going to be tough. Probably pretty emotional. But, um, you know, like I said, I've, I've had it one hell of a time here and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Dylan, when you think about yourself at the at the next level, um, how much do you think it uh, it benefits you that you do a lot of things or have done over the course of your career with special teams and and playing different positions and all those sorts of things? Yeah, uh, you know, I'd like to think it, it would help, but, um, you know, my mindset is just do whatever I can to help the team win, and um, that's been my mindset since high school. So, um, you know, whatever finishing roles I need to do for this bowl game, I'm, I'm willing to do, and also uh, at the next level as well. Had, did you decide pretty early on that, that this was going to be your last season, even after the uh, rule change came out? Uh, you know, I always kind of had that on mind, um, being a fifth-year senior and stuff. And, you know, six years is a long time. Um, but, you know, I, I'm at peace with the decision and, and excited and looking forward to um, continuing to play football. I want to ask you a question about somebody on the other side of the ball. Uh, Thomas Harper is a guy that I'm sure you've you've gone up against uh, at, at times in practice. What, uh, what have you seen from him development-wise? How has he grown? As a uh, as a coverage guy on that uh, that slot receiver, a lot. You know, that's a guy that's been kind of moved around quite a bit um, as, as his early career here. You know, he started at a corner, went to safety. Now he kind of plays a nickel safety role, so he's been moved around a lot. And I think all those ex past experiences have really helped him. Now, you know, he's he's grown a bunch and will continue to do so. So he's he's a great player and will only get better. Is he a trash talker? I haven't heard too much. I, I, don't, I couldn't speak for him on game day, but, um, you know, he, he's pretty much just a quiet guy who goes about his business at practice. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Well, Dylan, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, guys. You guys take care. Take care. You have a good night. Me too. Members of the media, thank you as well. We always appreciate you.